So I've been a Longer fan for ages, and they don't always lead the market. They don't come out with a new laser every six months, uh, like some manufacturers do. But when they come out with a new laser, it's always great. It's always a fantastic price, and you're probably gonna love it just as much as I do. Now this is the new Longer, the Longer B1. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at it, so stick around. Hey, how's it going? Steve here, welcome back. Now, I've taken a bit of heat over the last little while because I've ended up reviewing a few lasers that tend to be at the higher end of the market from a price perspective. And sometimes they're beyond the planned budget for some viewers on the channel. So it's a fair comment that, that these are very expensive lasers. So Longer came along recently and said, hey, we've got this brand new laser, the Longer B1. It's this one you see behind me and we want to talk about it. Now gone are the 2020 aluminum extrusion from the old Ray Phi family in favor of proper shaped uh, extrusion channels uh, that make this look like a, a workshop appliance rather than some kind of an experiment. And it's got 30 watts, it's got all the features, limit switches, absolute and, and uh, relative positioning, uh, all the things you would expect from a laser that costs $1,700, but this laser is currently under $1,000. So what I wanna do in this video is say, hey, is this really as good as those, those higher end lasers? And in this video, I'm gonna put it through its paces and I'll show you what I found, found out. And I'm betting you might want one of these rather than those, those higher end lasers. So that's enough context, let's get going. Now, as usual, I'll start with a bit of a flyover here and show you what you get with a longer B1. Uh, the first thing you're gonna notice is the workspace here is huge. It's 450 by 440 millimeter. And if we kind of zoom in on cable handling, they've done a really nice job of cable handling on the Y axis. They've made a decent attempt on the X axis here. That X axis is always a pain. They've tied down the, the wiring there and it, it looks okay. It's not best of breed, but it's far from the worst. There's some really terrible cable handling out there and the longer B1 is not one of them. All right, looking over on the front panel, uh, cables up on top, there's no display, so it's not really an issue. There's an SD card and a key switch, as well as a reset there. Uh, looking over on the laser module, big module, full 33 watts. Now you may notice that shiny uh, shield on the front. It's great for safety, but it makes it a little more difficult to align material. Uh, you may notice I've already put some index marking there. Uh, for focus, uh, manual focus, but it works really well. Flip down the, the little stick and uh, thumb, thumb screw, drop the laser down, tighten the screw, flip the, the stick back up and you're ready to go. Finally, we'll look at the aluminum extrusion here. It's very nice. Uh, emergency stop over on the right hand side. And of course, there's an air pump included here. And unlike some of the higher end lasers, uh, this one is actually connected to the controller, which means from Lightburn, you can actually control the pump, turn it on and off, which is just fantastic by comparison to some of the others. So with the laser up and running now, I wanted to do uh, some, some cutting. And the first thing I did was took some three millimeter hardware store plywood and did a cut test in Lightburn. And you can see even with this harder plywood, it did a really nice job as far as, as cutting. But in the real world is where it matters. So I did a, I cut out a little penguin uh, silhouette I, I made here. And now if you're a member, you can get this off the uh, member site. Uh, I'll put the project up there. And uh, it fit together really nice. So the cuts were very precise. Uh, everything was nice and tight when I put it together and it looked great. Next, I'll take a look at engraving here. And uh, this was initially a very bad news situation. And I'll talk more about that in a minute, but uh, I did some engraving tests. Now I've gotten uh, away from doing those matrixed uh, engraving uh, palettes because I'm not sure they actually tell you a whole lot. So what I wanted to do going forward is use a gradient scale uh, test that I put together. And I started here with just a piece of scrap cherry I found, and you can see it goes from zero to 100% power. And what you get is a gradient out of it. It's a grayscale engraving. But the, what it allows you to do is determine where the high and low ranges are. And you can see here on this piece of maple, I did another scale, but I also did the, the dog image. And this is honestly the first time I've ever been able to discern his jacket from the floor. It's very similar colors. 
and it was a bit of a challenge and now it's awesome. So next I did some, some 303 stainless steel and you can see what you get there is the rainbow effect. So you could use that as, a, as an opportunity to determine what colors you want to engrave. I'm not a huge fan of, of colored engraving. I think it's a bit of a marketing bullet item really, as opposed to something you could practically use, but it's there and you can play with it a bit. I've, I've certainly took a bit of a stab at it. And then finally, I used a different kind of stainless steel and, and did a proper grayscale. And you could see it looked great and you could easily take this and do a, a, an actual image on a piece of stainless steel. So I mentioned I was having a problem and it was with engraving initially and then I looked back and realized I have I had a couple of other problems and what I did was I ran a gradient that gradient test and on the longer B1 it was just awful to the point where the material was just completely charred it was just not right so I started playing with settings. I cranked the speed up to 60,000 millimeters a minute, which is as fast as it can go. It was still doing uh, overpowering. So I lowered the power range of that gradient test from zero to 20%. It was still going bad. And you could see here, uh, as I compared it to the Acer, P, the Acer L2 and the Xtool D1 Pro 40, you can see there's quite a dramatic difference in the case of the uh, B1, it actually carved a hole through the material. Now keep in mind, this is at 20%. So something very, very wrong. So I got in touch with the distributor and longer and said, don't, don't ship this. Customers are going to hate you. There's all kinds of issues here. And uh, while I was looking at this, I looked back at the, at one of the cut tests I did. And I noticed that in the bottom corner of every cut test, Every square in the cut test, it actually paused the laser for about a half a second or something before it moved to the next next square. And in that time, the laser was still on and every single corner got, got a hole punched through it, even at very low power. So there was something wrong. And while I was doing one of these tests, I stopped the, the laser from light burn. The laser motion stopped, but the power on the laser was still going and it came very close to starting a fire. So if you want to know what those emergency stop buttons are for, it's this time. So I hit that and, and the laser shut down. But I thought, okay, this is seriously broken. So I reached out to Vintari, who's another YouTuber. Uh, I'll put a link to his channel down below. Uh, he said, guess what? I'm looking at the B12 and I'm having the exact same problems. So this, at this point I went, okay, this is either a hardware design problem or a software problem. And I went back to, to Longer and said, you know, you got to fix this. They came back and said, well, set the overscan on engraving to 10%. And I said, that's not a solution. So they came back again and they said, turn off constant power mode. And I looked and went, hey, I don't actually have constant power mode. And in Lightburn, if your laser doesn't support this, it just won't put it in the user interface. So I went back in into the device settings, the configuration that was set for me when I when I set this laser up using Find My Laser. And what it had done is, is selected the Gerbil M3 driver, which clearly it's not compatible with because I switched it to the Gerbil driver, the standard Gerbil driver, and all of a sudden everything worked fantastic and in fact it worked better than almost any laser i've ever seen so there's the anecdote uh, if you do get one of these and and i would say yeah this is a fantastic laser but if you don't change this setting this device driver from gerbil m3 to standard gerbil you are going to hate longer so don't hate longer just just set gerbil right from the get-go and and all of a sudden you'll love longer Okay, so in the end, I love this laser, but uh, let's take a look at a few things I think that they did really well and why I love it, as well as a few things I think they could still do better. Uh, on the pro side here, this laser has absolutely trivial assembly. There's two bolts in each corner and you have to slide two belts over the, over the sprockets inside the frame. That's probably the only challenge here, but in the end, you can have this laser up and running in as little as 10 minutes. Uh, no other laser I've seen, uh, unless it's completely assembled, will let you do that. 
Uh, next on the list here, uh, in spite of all of my challenges, cutting and engraving turned out to be exceptional. Uh, engraving in particular is one of the best I've ever seen for grayscale photo engraving. Uh, if, that's, if that's what you want to do, then you might really want to consider this laser. Uh, and uh, finally on the pro side here, the price of this laser is excellent. It's under a thousand dollars. It competes with the Xtool D1 Pro, with the Acer L2 and, and Acer V35, as well as some of the other uh, top of the market lasers. This laser is several hundred dollars cheaper than some of those, almost half the price in some cases. And as near as I can tell, there is no real uh, corners cut here. There's no downside. This is just a great laser for the money. Uh, now, on the con side, there are some things I think they could do better. Uh, when the laser starts up and it does a home or you hit the home button, it is glacially slow. If the laser is in the upper right corner when you hit home, go get a lunch because it's going to take forever to get back to the lower left corner. Uh, I'm not sure why they go so slow, but they do. Uh, I think they, they could certainly improve that. Uh, next on the list, uh, as typical for so many of these lasers, they put that high gloss uh, reflective window on the front. Great for safety, but it's very hard to align. And on my laser, it took me about five minutes to put, uh, to take a Sharpie and, and put a mark on the outside of the case of the laser module where, where the laser is to help me align it. Uh, you know, longer, I know, I know the price is an issue here. You're trying to keep the price down, but there's nothing like a laser crosshair uh, as far as uh, sighting things goes. And finally on the con side here, uh, when I did the, the install and I said, I clicked in Lightburn, find my laser, uh, it found the laser, it configured the laser, but it used the wrong driver. And I, that's what caused me to run into all these problems. And I will say this again, if you have one of these lasers, you won't regret it if you configure it properly, but pick the Gerbil driver instead of Gerbil M3. Okay, if you are interested in buying one of these longer B1 lasers, uh, I'll put a link down below. That's an affiliate link. So if you use it, uh, I appreciate it because you're helping out the channel. Uh, it does take a lot of time and honestly money to, to put a YouTube channel together and keep it running. Uh, so, if, you know, any help there is, is great for both of us, hopefully. Uh, I'll also put Vintari's website uh, down below, his YouTube page. Uh, good channel, go watch that. And I'll, I'll close here by saying this laser competes really closely with the Acer L2, uh, as well as the V35 and the Xtool D1 Pro. Uh, I'll put links to, to some of those videos up above here. If you want to do a comparison, go watch those reviews and I'll see you over there. And get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.